what advice do you have for teachers who are uh, not racialized uh, or not black, actually, and want to use this resource in the classroom, but are unsure of how to start? Now, I ask that because I, I hear a lot of teachers saying things like, well, I don't I don't feel comfortable. What if I make a mistake or I don't, I don't know enough about it? Uh, if you could say something to them, those those that are hesitant, what, what would you say? I think what I would say is that this resource was created to disarm that. This resource was created to give you permission. Um, it would be one thing for you to, if I'm going to be blunt, dive into slavery and talk about how bad it is. Um, that can be very triggering for students who maybe are descendants of slaves and don't know um, or are learning that in their own history at their own homes. Things like that are triggering. But this resource was created by two educators who happen to be Black. And so this is us telling you that it's okay. As a Black woman, I'm still learning every single day about my history, about my culture, about um, where I come from and Ghanaian heritage and so many traditions and things that are in my family that I didn't know before. Um, so this this guide was not meant to, you know, target you, corner you, make you feel bad about history. No, we're trying to make our students better. And the only way we can do that is with knowledge. Um, so using this guide in the way that it was created can only bring you success when it comes to having these tough conversations with your students in the classroom. I'd like to add to that. I think um, just uh, springboarding off of what Sarah said so well, um, is that there's many, many voices uh, that brought this project to fruition um, and that in terms of disarming the conversation, um, it is primary voices, primary sources, lived experiences, sharing their story um, thanks to not just, you know, printed, printed uh, stories, but also the multimedia resources so that it just invites uh, the educator, regardless of their cultural background, to, you know what, drop their shoulders, take a breath, and to learn right alongside their their students, and to hear themselves the stories directly from those who have lived them, or their, their relatives, or their ancestors. And so it's that invitation for all of us, and that's a big deal for, for teachers, to be lifelong learners, and to, to be that student right alongside. And it, to, to, to have that conversation at the be beginning, you know what? I might get it wrong. I might not know the answer to your question, but you know what? Um, within this resource, we can reach out to CBC. We can reach out to Cheryl Fogo. We can look at um, the uh, resources and the different um, books and so on. Um, and we can uh, connect and build um, community with and relationships with all these incredible people um, that that ha share uh, have so much uh, lived history and so much knowledge to share, uh, and we can learn alongside each other and grow from that. Absolutely. And by you know when when we looked at the resource, we looked at multiple ways of learning because differentiated instruction is something that is so important. And uh, so many of the tasks are low floor, high ceiling tasks that virtually any of our students can accomplish. And by working alongside them on these low floor, high ceiling tasks, we're hitting all of our learners. We're reaching all of our kids and they're doing so in a way that isn't just a paper pencil task, staring at the board, listening to a lecture, they're engaged in their learning. And so um, it offers you as the teacher grace and a moment to step back and just observe and watch them learn and watch the light bulb start to turn on about history in this country and how you know, what we've learned, what I learned, what Natasha learned as, as students in, in Canada isn't the whole history. It's not it's not our whole truth. And so this resource allows us to explore that with our kids. Thanks, Sarah. I guess Thanks, I would just I, I would say that I really um, want to honor that question because it is it is um, a legitimate concern to think about what if I make a mistake uh, and I think there are teachers in this country with a lot of diversity in their classrooms and lots of black kids and 
and people in the community that they can reach out to for more information. And then there are teachers in parts of the country where it's not as diverse, where they might still have just one black student in their classroom and how you would present a material in that kind of setting might be very, very different from how you might pre present it in a community where you can get, you know, my email address from your principal or whatever. Um, so I think it's a legitimate question and I think there are going to be mistakes made. I would say for the educator, it's really important to shift your own thinking because if you genuinely can bring yourself to understand what I've said, which is that black history is everywhere and all around us and has always been, um, not ha has not always been because there were thousands and thousands of years of history in this part of the world where none of us except for indigenous people were, but from the beginnings of Canada as we think of it, um, there has been black presence here. If you can genuinely shift your own thinking, if you can um, truly embrace black history as a part of your own history and understand that this is all of our history, I think that will be helpful when you do make a mistake or when you do have a student who um, may experience um, some kind of discomfort because they are an isolated student in a community that isn't as warm and welcoming as it should be. I think always um, try to put yourself in that student's life. Try to think of, of the situation from that student's perspective. And um, and absolutely there will be there will be missteps here and there. So it's it's a matter of um, trying to change not just what happens in your individual classroom, but what happens in the curriculum across this whole country. Because until all students, every single child who's educated in this country has access to this knowledge, it's going to be very hard for individual teachers to make that shift. So that's just what I would throw out there. <laughs>